Hi guys, it's Angie Bell with My Fairy Treasures. Okay, you guys, I'm coming at you today with a art journal slash junk journal page. So one page will be art journaling and one page will be junk journaling. Just, if you haven't been to my channel before, just so you can kind of see. Oh, this, wait a minute. I had something break off here. There was something else here. Just a second, guys. Okay, sorry about that. This is a little flip that kind of came off. I need to hot glue it on. Sometimes your flips, you can't just use the glue. You have to use like maybe some hot glue or a different adhesive. Anyway, this is art journaling and junk journaling mixed together, okay? And we always start out with collage, but I just want to show you. So right here, this is the junk journaling part. The art journaling part is this part here. See all, this, all the collaging we did? That's all like the mixed media art journaling and then these are pockets here pocket here pocket here and so I have tags in the pockets that needs to be coffee stained or Tim Holtz another cool tag I'm just showing you so you kind of know that my style of, of art journaling and junk journaling here's another really cool little um, file folder I made these aren't these fabulous and just a bunch of stuff is stuck in the in the so this is the junk journaling part of it I have a feather I put in here and a little tag cool little tag that my husband saved from something okay and then this is a flap see so you just go like this and this is a flap and there's more um, collaging here it's hard to fit it all in the camera um, this is a pure mixed-media um, art journal page okay let's see if we can keep moving things and just a second yeah i think i can move this over so you guys can see okay and then this is um on this side this is um mixed media art journal page but it's a flap see so that makes it kind of like the junk journal and so i also did some mixed media collage here and then there's more mixed media collage here the art journaling part and then we have a really cool bunch of really cool fabrics that we collaged as the focal point there. So now you can see how I art journal and junk journal at the same time. Okay, so now we can get started. I just like to share that because some people are like art journaling and junk journaling because people usually art journal or they junk journal. But I love doing both. So I've started this combination of doing both because I missed junk journaling. I love to junk journal. I missed it. So I thought, why not add the junk journaling to my art journal? But the first thing I always start out with is collage, and that's how we get all of our pages going. And I'm working in an altered book. What an altered book is, is you keep five pages, or you keep 10 pages, rip five out, keep 10 pages, rip five out. That gives you room in your uh, journal. I had another, just looking, I had something else here. I don't know what the other little piece went to. Oh, it's right here. Okay. Just a second. I got to put this back in here. And that goes over there. Okay. I was getting confused. Um, so anyway, so you can take any book you want. I got this book from Dollar Tree. I love it. It's really nice and square. I love the squareness and the size. I like a big journal. Um, so you can make yourself an altered book, which can be your art journal. Keep 10 pages, rip five out. Keep 10 pages, rip five out. Okay? All right. So that's how you create your altered book slash art journal. Okay. So after we do the collaging on both, everything's not going to be finished in this one. We're going to have part two, maybe part three. It might be two parts, maybe three parts. Um, when, after we get down with the collaging on both, and we won't do this today, but they'll be on the next one. We're going to take this tag envelope. I'll probably have to take that off and maybe... Is I going to do that here or that here? Okay, we'll probably end up taking this um, wax seal off of here. This is an envelope that I jelly printed and made into like a tag envelope is what I call them. And they're great like this if you're going to put them into pockets, okay? But we're going to take this, take this off and use this as a focal point on this page. On this page over here, we're going to put a pocket in. And then um, this will be a tag that goes in it. So it'll be an envelope tag. And this will go in the pocket. And we'll find a few more things to go into the pocket. Um, oh, no. I just lied. No, we're not going to do that. We are going to... Sorry. 
<gasps> I forgot. We're going to put a pocket in over here. I'm not sure if it's going to be a side pocket or just a regular pocket here. I'll figure that out. These tags, I don't have to take off the wax seals off the back. Both of these are going to be tags that go into the pocket. Okay? And I'll show you guys how to do that part too. Over here, after we do the collage, I'm going to layer a piece of corrugated cardboard, um, a um, piece of uh, muslin fabric that's been rust dyed, and then I took some uh, molding paste and put that over it. Okay? This is a little piece from Dollar Tree. Get this in the gardening section floral section I love this stuff and I'm just making a little layered mess of fabrics and corrugated cardboard and that's gonna be the focal point on this side and I might put something here like a little jewel of some sort okay so I just want to let you know where we're going but the first thing I always start with is and it's my favorite part of the whole process is collage and I like to collage with my own jelly prints or my jelly prints or printables so that's what we're gonna do all right so this is one of my printables here okay now it doesn't look like that when you um, print them off so I sell my printables five for two dollars and fifty cents and you print them off yourself um, they're in my Etsy shop and um, there's a clickable link below if you like any of these papers that you see you can get them in my Etsy shop Okay, so I love this. We're gonna put that right there. And my printables, see how they look? I don't do perfect printables. I like my printables to look like old walls, old doors, very old world. That's the style I like. So, very grungy. Grungy, old world, old wall, like that. And since I stick with all of these very um, grungy, old world, brown, naturist type of colors, everything always goes together. So. Oh, and I have a video on making, I have a video on making these. I'm making these envelope tags. So you can check this out on my channel. It's just probably a few videos below how I made these, okay? I show you how to um, take the envelopes and put them on the jelly plate. We do that first. I teach, I have another video also on how to make um, wax seals. That's just a few things down. And then I show you how I turn these into envelope tags. Okay? All right. We might probably get to work these two pages together. I'll put this on this side. And also, we'll be adding in just a second, I like to add... Um, different languages, so different scripts um, to my work because it represents, all my work represents different cultures, different races of people, um, different ethnic groups because I just feel the more that we um, get to know each other, the more peace there will be in this world. So that's what all my work represents and that's why um, in a second I will be choosing some languages. And where I get them from, I just Google them. I'll Google, uh, let's say, Spanish Spanish uh, letters, um, uh, Italian letters. And sometimes I put love letters in because you get some really pretty script. Um, so all different types, Hawaiian, Nigerian. I have like just tons of different script. And we're gonna choose some right now. What is this one? This will be perfect. Italian and Spanish look very similar. So this is either Italian or Spanish. And I believe this is Italian. Yeah, I believe this is Italian. See? Let's put that here in the corner so we gotta give ourselves a straight edge. Save all your little bits, okay, and put them in something. Like, I have these. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. You get these at Dollar Tree. These little plastic clear envelopes. They come in different colors, and they're still clear, like pink or teal. And um, I love these because these can, um, like, if you have, like, leftover little scrap pieces, 
then you can storm in these. And then like these, these are page embellishments, which we'll use on this. See, these are page embellishments and I'm putting them in here. And I have a video on how to make these too. Aren't these so junk journal-y? I love it. I could put that in the corner page. I could put this, I can use them as tags. We'll put some of these on here as tags today. Um, if you have an envelope, you can put them on an envelope. You can put them on tags. You can put them as tabs. That's what I mean. I'm going to put them as tabs. Um, in fact, let me take a couple out so I don't forget. We'll take out two. These two will go with what we're doing. And this is all made out of scraps. That's why I said do not throw your scraps away like this. Okay, I just went down a whole rabbit hole. See, that's why I love junk journaling because you get to make stuff like this and I just think that is so fun. But then I love art journaling. So the mix of the two, it's right up my alley. And if you're watching me, it's probably up your alley too. So. And I'll show you before this video is over, I will show you the front of this book. I did a thing called Finnebear Art on the front of this book. And I need to make a video and because um, I have several books that I could make into um, altered books, make into art journals. In fact, I'll just show you right now so that I don't forget. See, this is Finnebear Art, Finnebear style art. It's assemblage art. So most of these pieces are molded pieces, but you can make stuff like this with Christmas decorations, little bits of broken jewelry, just any little bits that you find and collect, you can use. Okay, you do not have to use molded pieces. But I love it. Finnebear makes molds, and I love to do stuff like this. So I need to do one of these um, again on video. I don't, have I done? I've done lots of Finnebear art on videos, but I don't know if I've done a art journal like a cover. We'll do that soon. Hopefully I can get to that next week. Okay, so I need to find another language for the other side. All right, what is this? Oh, this is fun. This is some old English. Let's do that. Where's my scissors? Here we go. Oh, sorry. I'll bring my camera back down here in just a second. I had to bring my camera up so I could turn the page. So put in, um, like, you know, love, like Spanish or, or Italian love letters or Hawaiian love letters. Um, or you can put in Hawaiian script or Irish script. Those are different things to search for when, um, searching for uh, these different languages. This is from a um, Asian newspaper, which I love. Isn't that cool? We're going to put this in there. So look how many cultures we've already mixed together, you guys. We have Asian, we have Old English, we have, um, is this Spanish or Italian, did I say? You know, I can compare it to something else I have. This is Spanish because this one's Italian. We'll use this one too. All right, I got too much going on. All right, look at that up there. Now, this one right here is just very black and white. It's not really matching. So we will Tim Holtz distress this, so don't worry. I know you're stressing out about that. Like, that's not gonna match. That's a, like a sore thumb, it would. But we're going to, um, Anything, and I even add a little Tim Holtz Distress ink to um, a lot of different things. If I think I want to change the color or deepen it or age it a little bit more. You can also coffee stain any of this stuff too. There we go. And like this, this doesn't really match, right? Well, we'll use Tim Holtz Distress inks to do that. I'm not going to use this yet. Let's do some more um, script, and then we'll add that in. Let me see what other languages I have. I have some Arabic right here. Cool, huh? I have a whole book of this Arabic. I found a book in a, a thrift store, and I was like, ooh, 
Nice. I've had it for a long time. What does that say? I found another love letter. Found some more. This is Italian. These are um, symbols. Um, Nigerian symbols. Represent my own culture because I'm Nigerian. That's what most, that's what I am mostly is Nigerian. Here is, um, I'm a lot of different things, but mostly Nigerian. Look at this Asian, this Asian script. Oh, and then this right here is Irish. Okay, so we got so much good, we got so much good stuff. This is the kind of stuff that excites me to no end. And I mean to no end. Okay. I love collecting the stuff. I love using the stuff. I just love it. This is a jelly print. Okay, so you can see my style of jelly printing. Very old world, old wall, grungy. Love it. <gasps> love it. Don't want to do that. Ooh, yes, I do. And because I kind of stick with the similar, very earthy type of colors, everything goes together. Not that you have to use earthy colors, but get your color palette down that you like when you're doing your jelly prints or even when you're making your papers, but when you're doing your jelly prints. And then that way, when you go to jelly print, everything just really goes. It's like you have a little kit. Everything goes together. Because most likely, you know the colors you like to use. You're going to use those most of the time, right? Well, use those colors. Get your color palette together that you really love. And use those for the most part. Not that you can never not change. But do it for the most part. And then when you go to a collage or do a mixed media background, everything goes together. Here's another really pretty jelly print. Okay. I don't usually use straight edges. I usually like to tear unless we're lining things up on the edges, which is what we're about to do. So that's why I'm cutting. And we'll save this because this is a little scrap that we can use to make those page embellishments. Also, I make sta my own stamps, my own washi tape, and I use all the scraps to do it. In fact, we need to make some washi tape and stamps. I haven't done that forever. That looks pretty there. And we'll put this piece over here. We're working, working both sides at the t same time. Yeah, I like that, okay. Oh, and I have a magazine over here on the side. And what I do is when I'm done I use it as a glue surface, and when I'm done, I flip it. So I always have a nice, clean surface to work with. Also, I'm using, um, you can use any adhesive that you want. I'm using matte medium. And I usually tell you guys to pay attention because a Hobby Lobby, starting at the end of January, usually clearances each section of the store, 75% off. And you can get matte mediums, like big old jars like this, for 5 bucks when they're regularly 20 I have tons. I have quite a few of them because I've collected them over the years from the clearances. But this year, when they clearanced, they didn't clearance a bunch of the of, of the mediums. So maybe it's still coming. But they clearanced that area and they didn't clearance the mediums. I was like, oh man. So. Oh wait, where's I gonna put this right here? So I'm glad over the years I've been collecting them been stocking up because look this year they didn't clearance them at least so far they might still clearance them they still may do it I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller yeah I like that better and my process this is my favorite part of the whole thing is I love I just love collage I just think collage is I think collage is the best thing on earth I love doing makeup videos. I love doing my Dollar Tree hauls. But I love, my favorite thing to do is collage. What I'm doing right now. I loved it as a child. I've said this a million times, but 
when I was little, some of you are going to be sick of my stories, but when I was little, um, I'd be in class just bored as hell. And, uh, you know, let's do some math. Let's not. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I'd be thinking in my little head. Let's do some collage. How about that? <laughs> that's what I would be thinking. And finally, the teacher's like, okay, we're going to do some collage. And I would be like, finally. I don't even know if they do collage in school anymore, but she, she had a pile of magazines over in the corner. You could go get a piece of um, poster board over there in the corner. Not poster board, but they had those big rolls of paper. We could go get some of that. So I got some of that. And you would, she let us collage for an hour or two. I was like, oh, finally. And then she would say, okay, we're going to do some creative writing. And I was like, yes. I loved creative writing, collage, which is my favorite, when we got to learn cursive writing, I was like, can we just stick with um, creative writing, cursive, collage, okay, let's just stick with things like that. Okay, this is a printable of mine, which I think is really cool. I think this printable is in my Etsy shop. I will check. You can go there and see if this is in my Etsy shop. I'm pretty sure it is. If it's not, it's going to be soon. But I love it. Okay. And I feel like that should go right there. Or actually, you know what we need to do? Maybe this can go. I think maybe this can go down here. Got to rip this off. No, that's too matchy-matchy right there. Maybe not. Ooh, that looks good there. All right. You never know what's going to look good until you just, until you do it. Oh, we got to rip off this. I can't have no straight edges. There we go. That'll look better like that. Unless you're lining up the edges of a page or the top of a page, I love to rip the edges because then everything just melts together really nicely, in my opinion. So if you've always wanted to do collage and you like the kind of papers I make, definitely go there and pick some up. And then that way you can just get a book Keep 10 pages, rip five out, and get to collaging right away. Okay. What else? Oh, I want to put script here. I want to put a language there. And I think I want to put... Look at this. Isn't this gorgeous? Patty Tully Parish gave, these, gave me a whole bunch of cool stuff for my collages. And I love it. Thank you, Patty. Patty Tully Parish. Check her out. She goes live. I don't know if she has been live lately or not. Patty Tolly Parrish. She's usually in my description box. Go check her out. If she, and you can just watch, you know, her, her past videos. She does mixed media. She does work like this type of styles, type of, type of stuff, and it's fabulous. It's fabulous. All right. I want this to go right here. Okay, but we want to take this off of here on the bottom. We've got to rip off the edges so we don't have too straight of lines. And let's also just rip it like that so it's, let's rip it like this so it looks kind of uneven-y. There we go. Is uneven-y a word? <laughs> what the hell am I saying? So it's uneven-y. Oh, well, that makes sense. All right, right there. Isn't that beautiful? I think so. Alrighty. How long have we been on here so far? 24 minutes. Okay. We'll go for 45 minutes to an hour, which is what my norm is. I personally, some people hate long videos, but I love a long video. If you're a crafter or you like to do mixed media or art, I, most of us like long videos so that we don't have to go find another video. We're usually watching a video and working on our stuff, you know? 
So that way you don't have to go find another, uh, someone else to watch. <laughs> That's what I'm like. I'm like, find someone I like, find out some, someone I really like their work and perfect. I'm good. Okay. This is another printable of mine. That's a Coco Pelli. And it means um, a, lot, a lot, you see this in Arizona a lot, in the Southwest, but a lot in Arizona. Coco Pellis are on everything. Um, they're just everywhere. They're on bases, they're on art, they're on just everything. And um, it means uh, celebration, like celebrating, dancing, like when the new harvest comes in, the new year. Um, so it means celebration. Uh, and it also stands for fertility. So, like after the winter and the spring has come, all that stuff is, that spring brings. I'm thinking about putting that right there. Okay, let's just see. Okay, let me cut the white lines. Somebody knows what I'm going to say. White lines go away. <laughs> If you're my age, you know that song, White Lines. It's a very inappropriate song that we used to sing. If you went to a thing called Teen Night, which I did in high school, on Sundays in the summertime, go to Teen Night. So like the regular nightclub would be Teen Night on Sundays. Um, oh, we'd be singing and yelling, White Lines. <laughs> yeah, was that inappropriate for us to be singing that song? Uh, yeah. <laughs> and they played it for us too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was fun. I've talked about that a million times too, but that was a blast. I had so much fun. I met so many friends from all over Arizona because all the different schools would come, you know, and there was this, there was this guy named Christian and uh, he went to an all boys school, very richy. And, uh, I met him at gold rush and I'd only see him at gold rush and he liked the way I danced. I liked how he danced. He was really cute too. He had a girlfriend. So I was always like, shouldn't you be dancing with your girlfriend? But his girlfriend, I guess, couldn't really dance. And he liked to dance with me. I think his girlfriend would get really mad. But anyway, we were just friends. So if a song, like a good song came on, he didn't even ask. He was like my dancing partner. He didn't even ask. He just came over, took my hand, took me to the floor. <laughs> I go, oh, okay, Christian, I guess we're dancing. Yeah, we are. <laughs> There's no choice. <laughs> it was fine. I adored him, so we had a good time together. I did think it was kind of rude of him, though. He had a girlfriend, and she'd be there, and she'd be giving me some dirty looks. <laughs> I'm like, sorry. Dance with your boyfriend, then. But I think she didn't even want to dance. That was her thing, because I asked him, I think, one time. I said, why don't you dance with your girlfriend? He goes, I think he says something like she can't dance or she don't like to dance or something. And he loved to dance. And this boy could dance. He was good. It was fun. That's hilarious. I just went way back. I love this. This is a printable. And this is also, this is a jelly print, an original jelly print. But this is a printable that I do have in my Etsy shop. I've had it in there for a long time. There's a story for you that I think I haven't told anybody yet. I usually repeat my stories a lot. <laughs> I'm sure some people are like, girl, we've heard this already. Shut up. But we might put this upside down because it doesn't really matter. Ooh, that looks cool there. Okay, we'll do that. And I may even add a flap over here on this side, which I'll show you how you add a flap. And that may be where my pocket is. No, we'll, we'll just we'll just, we'll just add the pocket onto this page. I won't add any flips or flaps on this one. If you want to see like the how I was showed you how I had some flaps and flips and stuff, um, I have a video on that. That's probably a couple of videos below. It even says adding the flips and flaps to your art journal slash junk journal. So uh, we need a t we need some uh, language to go right there. 
We need some language, which might be, we're gonna use this Nigerian. Now, this is white, right? So it really does not go with what we're doing. So don't fret. We will Tim Holtz distress this, and it will go really well. Or if you uh, don't have Tim Holtz distress inks, you can also just use regular inks. Um, any of your ink pads, like your browns and stuff, if that's what you, you know, like my, you know, mine's going to be browns and rusts and stuff like that. You can use that. So also you can just coffee stain it. Look, let me show you. I always have this sitting at my, at my, here at my table. Go to Dollar Tree. This water bottle is perfect. They come in like clear pink, clear blue, just regular clear. And I like these because they, the stopper on them is really good. It doesn't get stuck, but go and get the instant coffee. Um, this water bottle and you need some alcohol regular rubbing alcohol so it's one cup of water three-fourths cup of the instant coffee in some hot water stir that up just pour in a little bit of alcohol that's the preservative and then you can as and then you can keep this at your station it won't spoil or anything because you've got the alcohol in there for the preservative so and you can just coffee stain your piece right here at your table coffee stain it dry it a little bit glue it on here I've been known to glue this down like this and just spray it right on here and let the whole thing dry and do that too. Um, for your glue, I'm using matte medium, but like I said, you can use whatever you want. If you have Elmer's, you can use that. If you have Mod Podge, you can use that. Um, use whatever you want. This is going to look really good once we get the Tim Holtz Distress inks on it and it melts in. And this needs to be a little Tim Holtz Distress ink too, or coffee stain. Okay, we finished up this page. Let's get back over here and see what else we need to do. Okay. Just a second, guys. I'm just looking over my. Um, here's another uh, printable. This is what I call intuitive writing. So it's a jelly print with my own intuitive writing. This is my own intuitive writing mixed with. Or is this all Asian symbols? Just a second. I think this is a mixture of my intuitive writing and real Asian symbols. I think I mixed the two, yeah. I was confusing myself. I was gonna maybe use that, we'll see. Just a second, let me look and see what else I got. Let me see what else I got. I love this paper. This isn't a jelly print. Um, how did I make this? Um, I think I just took, I think I copy stained the paper, crumbled the paper up, and then just took my inks and just went over it like this. Isn't that fabulous? Um, we're going to use this right here. Because I'm going gonna, 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 to, the next steps will be the mark making. So I like these pieces that have a really good base to them that look all grungy like this. And, um... Yeah. Oh, this is how I make like a paper that looks like leather. That's what I did. And it's super simple. Like I said, I took some coffee stained paper. It doesn't even have to be coffee stained, but I took some printer paper that was coffee stained, crumbled it up, undo it, and then just take my um, Tim Holtz Distress Inks pads and just run them over like three or four different colors. And you can get like this stuff, these pages that look like leather. But we're also going to, when we do mark making, I like this nice background so we can do some mark making on it. So... So have some pieces that are that don't have a whole lot of have any design to them. I think I like that there. Or do I like it like this? I'm trying to decide how I want this. Oh, I like that. Okay. 
it always amazes me because you think that you like something and then you're like, uh, no. <laughs> Once you put it down, it tells you right away, uh, no. Uh, that doesn't look good. <laughs> so you can plan all you want, but you just really got to try things. Let's see what it looks like. All right. I want that here. I love how I'm just ripping this up. Pieces like this are just like gold because that can just go into a collage, you know, and have a collage and it'll look perfect. In fact, if I turn it up this way, it might be perfect here. Yes, it is. Look, I just said that. It could be just like gold. And look, I said of, I was thinking of it like this and putting it up at the top. But look, turn it this way with my straight edge. And we could put it like right here. Oh, I love that, I think. Do I? All right, just a second. Let me just see something. Or do I look? This was my original idea was this. I think I like this better. But anyway, that could have been gold. Just putting that there, that could have looked really good. But I think I like that. You know what I'm not liking about it? It's so similar to this right here. I need something that's a little bit different. All right, I'm looking through my pages right now, my papers. And seeing what I can find. Oh, I just ran into my uh, bubble paper. Now, this isn't in my Etsy shop, but I will get it in there. This is some bubble paper that I made. Isn't that beautiful? I love these bubble papers. And then I also made, um, like, universe, like... Um, planets. Isn't that cool? Yeah, these aren't in my Etsy shop, but I will, I need to get them in there. I'll, I'll be working on it. Next week, I'll get some of this stuff, um, some of these in my Etsy shop that aren't in there. Most stuff I showed you is in the Etsy shop. And there's tons of printables in there that I've made out of jelly printing and different techniques. Okay, I don't like that. I'm going to find something that I like in, to put in there. See if I like this. Oh, I think I like that. But I do want this to be not no straight edges. Yeah, I like that. So let's put that in. What time do we have? We're at... Very cool. Love this. And we have spaces, which is what I wanted. Here, this is this is real estate. This is real estate, real estate, real estate, some real estate here, um, some real estate here. And what I mean by real estate is we want to make marks. We want to do some mark making. So I have real estate to be able to do the mark making, which is going to be the next um, the next video. We'll do the mark making and then um, make the mark making and then make the pockets 
um, that's going to go on here. In fact, you know what? We need to collage a pocket. So just a second. Let me just see. So when you rip out the pages, put those pages in the back of your book. Okay. Because your pages are going to be, you can make flips and flaps out of those. You can, um, make your pockets. See, this is left over. And this is how I make my pockets. I make these gussets, which I'll show you on the next video, how to make these gussets. I need to put one more of these over here on this side. But anyway, you make these gussets so that you can really stuff your pockets full. In fact, let's go ahead and let's collage this really quickly so that we can, uh, this will be the pocket. Okay, so get yourself an extra piece, cut it in half or three quarters, however big you want your pocket. And this is going to go down here. Okay, on this page. Is that what I'm doing? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm all, is that what I'm doing? Because also, we can also do a side pocket too. Now, I want to do this. Okay. But before we do that, well, no, let's do it right now. What I need to do here, though, is I need to do some Timmel's distressing. So we'll do that here in just a second. But let's go ahead let me move this book for a second. Where am I going to move it to? Okay. Oh. All right. We're going to move that because we want to, um, this is going to be the pocket, right? So we need to collage this pocket too. So we'll take this piece here. We'll put that there. And this is perfect. I already have this done, basically, these gussets. And when you do this, it makes it so that um, your pockets um, can really handle a lot of things to be stuffed, um, to be um, put into the pockets. And I still have one little area, so I'll show you how to make one more of these. And we'll put it there, since it's, and it's almost done, in the next video. in the next video. Let's see. And when I don't have a straight edge, I just kind of I just go over the edge. And then that way I can just cut it off when it's all dry. Okay, so then you don't always have to have a straight edge. Just go over it, and then you'll cut that off when you're done. Let's take a piece of this. And we're just going to take the scraps left over from what we just did. Because um, then it'll go with our collage that we just did. The pockets will. So just use the same pieces. Just use the same ones. The leftovers. The leftover bits of things we just did on this pocket. So now this is so fun. Now, So now this is the junk journaling part of the art journaling. Of the art journaling slash junk journaling. Love it. And then I have this little piece, right? This little... Old English, we'll put that in somewhere right there. And I'll bring back the book here in a second because I want to do some Timmel's Distress Ink on some of the pieces that need to be a little distressed or the color needs to be enhanced. Okay. What else we got going on? What else do we got going on? Do I want that right there? I don't know. Let's find out.
Yeah, that looks good. That looks good. You know, remember those page embellishments? We're going to use one of those. We'll get some more out. Where did I put them at? Here they are. These things, they're made with scraps of fabric and scraps of paper. That would look perfect on the front of this pocket, wouldn't it? Look how cool that's going to look. I'll even probably layer, put a piece of something burlap and something else there, and then put that right here. And even in the corners, both corners, that could look really good right here in the center. So we'll be using these as we go along. Oh, I like that there. Let's just... This is another little piece that's left over and I just thought it would look good right here. In fact, I gotta cut I gotta cut this off now so I know where the top of this is so I can line it up. If you do cut with your scissors while if the glue is wet, make sure you wipe them off with your baby wipe. And that's another thing. Pick the baby wipes up from Dollar Tree. Because then you you can keep your hands from getting all sticky as you go along and it's a more enjoyable experience. And they're only a dollar twenty-five at Dollar Tree, so you probably already know this, but in case there's always new people watching, so that's why I don't mind repeating myself because there's always new people. So, and if you've been watching me for a long time, just don't listen when I hear me repeat myself. <laughs> This is another technique which I love. I make this out of magazines. Look how beautifully grungy this looks. <gasps> I don't think I, I need to make a printable out of this. So, you know, I need to put that right here. I don't want to tear that up because I don't think I've made that into a printable yet. Yeah, I know. I got a lot going on all the time. Okay. That's the way I like it. I, I like to have a lot going on. I'm the type of person to get bored quick if I don't have several things to that I can do. So I'm good with it. Do I like that? Yeah. That looks good. So if you decide you want to get those printables from me, everything will go together. So you can, you know, get five here, get five there, um, and they'll all go together because they're all in this same type of color situation. Perfect. Now let's just go ahead and cut off any of the edges that I went over, and then we'll. And then we'll Clean my scissors. There we go. How cool does that look? So that's going to be the pocket. Okay, guys? And on the next uh, video, I'll show you how to make our other little, um, these things, so that we can um, put this into the bottom page for our pocket. Okay? Gussets. That's what you call these, gussets. So, all right. So we're going to put this to the side. Let's bring our book back. The book is coming back. Oh, so heavy and let's get out let me bring this up a little bit let's get out my Tim Holtz distress inks so we can ink up a few things that need to be inked up let's ink up a few things that need to be inked up you know what this may be a flap look I could put this here 
and that could be a flap. I could even add a flap right in the middle. I haven't done that for a long time. And then add that flap in right there. That could be really cool. It has an extra little flap. All right, we'll see. I'll just leave that right there. Okay, so we need to get out some Tim Holtz Distress inks and my little things here. I love these. These are uh, makeup brushes I get at Dollar Tree in the makeup section. And they are great for um, your distress inks, for regular inks. They're fabulous. Oh, I didn't know I had this in here. Hmm. Okay. Okay, vintage photo. This will work. I have different ones that have different colors, names on them for colors, but... What is this? All right, we'll use those two. All right, so now let me get out my ink. Let me drink some water. All right, let me get out some inks here. Let me show you something else. Let me show you, show you, show you. Get these at Dollar Tree. Now, they just brought them out, so I don't know if you have to wait till next year. Just keep an eye out for them, though. But they're fabulous. Look at this. Okay? And you can you can store your distressed inks in them. Isn't that fabulous? And you can store the little distressed inks, too. Or any of your uh, ink pads. So they're great for that. Okay, so we're going to pull out a walnut stain. We're going to pull out my favorites. Aged mahogany. Walnut stain. Oh, this wild, okay, I love the rust color, and this wild honey looks like the rust color. All right, so we'll take that out. All right, like rusty hinges. I'm almost out of this. I need to get another one, but this wild honey looks like rusty hinges, so we are good. All right, let's start out with some... Oh, I got two walnut stains. I want to start out with Vintage Photo. I didn't even see Vintage Photo. I have a second. Let me see if I can get that out real quick. It might be in my other one. Here it is. Vintage Photo. We got it. Vintage Photo. Now, there's Distress Inks and Distress Oxides. They're both distressed. But Distressed Oxides, when you spray them with water do an oxidation process. They both, when you just put them on, look distressed, okay? The distressed inks, which this one's the distressed ink, it just looks more distressed, okay? We're not going to wet them. We're just going to use them as is, but they still have that distressed look, so. Even without watering them. Most people know this. I know, but you know what? Like I said, there's always new people. I remember when I first came to YouTube and there was so much to learn with crafting or arting because I like to craft and I like to do art and I was always like what is that what is that where do you get that where do you get this <laughs> so I know that you know there's always new people watching so I always try to give information all the time of what I'm using where you get stuff what things are for people who are new to all this I know I was grateful when people asked, when people explained things. I was like, oh, thank you. And my biggest thing is, where do I get that? Where do I get this? <laughs> All right, so I'm just doing some Timmel's Distress Ink. This is vintage photo. Just to some of the areas that I feel need to be more distressed. Just to deepen it up a little bit. Distress it. See how it looks already more distressed? Look how everything fits in better already. Bam! Bam! You know, we're done with this glue, so let me put this brush away before I dry that out. Okay. Let's use some of this wild honey that I was talking about. This dress wild honey. Looks very, like, rust. It's really cool looking. So this will add some rust here and there. Give us that rust look. Okay. 
All right. Let me just clean my brush up on something out on some other parts. Okay. So we got that rust going. Um, let's do some walnut stain. So this is walnut stain. That's a distressed ink. I have walnut stain in the ink and the oxide. Most of them I have in the inks and the oxides. This is adding some of the... I would say walnut stain. It's kind of like vintage photo, but deeper. I call it adding the dirt. This really adds the dirt. So I always start with um, vintage photo just to get things aged out. And sometimes I just leave it like that. But um, most of the time I always get out the um, walnut stain. Because like I said, this is the dirt. And then this, aged mahogany. I hardly ever hear anybody talking about aged mahogany. And it's gorgeous. It's an oxide. You know, I don't even know. Does Tim Holtz make the ink still? Or does he only make the oxides? I don't even know. I've had so many for so long that I don't know. See how, see how pretty that is? Look how gorgeous that is, that color. Gorgeous. Beautiful. Just add some of this here and there. There we go. See what that does? Um, adding these um, oxides. It just meshes everything together. It ages everything. Oh, that that ripped right there. Hope that glues back down. And because we're trying to create distress, it doesn't even matter that that ripped. We just gotta make sure it glues back down. Uh, let's get some glue on there. Let's use my finger. Put some glue on there. And glue that back down. There we go. It's just like I need to wipe whatever's on here off. All right, I want to go back in with the uh, the walnut stain. I'm gonna use the walnut uh, uh, oxide just a little bit here and there. I just feel like we need to make things a little bit more. Add a little more dirt to things. Oh, remember we just glued that down. Darn it. I need to stop touching that. When that gets done, we'll add some more distressing there. But I gotta leave that alone. Every time I say all right, then I do some more. Now I like it. it look, look what that does. It just really meshes everything together, doesn't it? Look how much that changed. That was the Nigerian symbols, Nigerian language, and it's Nigerian symbols. 
Look at that was a white piece of paper. See, look what it did. Now everything is really moving and grooving and meshing together. All right, so that is it for this one. We've been on for an hour. The next step is going to be mark making. So part two is going to be mark making and adding um, mark making and adding the pockets. We might do some other few things too. Well, mark making is a lot of different things. Anyway, we'll do mark making and then we'll add the pockets on, add the pocket on. Um, I may be adding a flap, a flap in the middle or on the side over here. Um, if I do, I'll make that off camera and then I'll show it to you guys um, and let you see that. And we need to put, then we need to put our tags in the pocket and then our focal point over here. So look how beautiful the focal point's gonna look on this side. Now that this is all done, it's gonna be beautiful. And do something like this and then I have these like very Tim Holtz looking stickers that look like metal and we'll probably put that on here in the middle of that but look how cool that's gonna look and that'll be the focal point I believe right in the middle so we'll see or I could end up just leaving this and not doing it all oh my god if I touch this one more time look at this it's it's just off now <laughs> We'll let that all dry, and then I'll put some Tim Holtz Distress ink right there. So it's kind of cool that it ripped, so there's a hole there, and it just shows, like, the print there. So once this dries, um, I'll Tim Holtz Distress the ink, and it won't stick out like a sore thumb. So that's the beauty of making really grungy type of artwork. When things like that happen, you don't have to sweat it. It's like that just adds to the whole beautiful grunginess of it all. So, okay, you guys, that is it for this one. Um join our group we have a group called our magical little place so if you do some work like this or even if you don't do work like this if you art journal junk journal knit crochet whatever you do come join inspire us be inspired if you have an uh, etsy shop or any shop at all that you of things you make um if you have a youtube channel you can come and leave links okay and just come there and get inspired there's so many great people in the group okay and um let me know how you like this process. Let me know um, if you like the grunginess of it. Do you collage yourself? Leave a comment below. Let me know what's going on with you with this type of artwork. Okay, you guys, that is it. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd love for you to do so. If you can give this video a thumbs up. Any comments or questions, leave below. Come visit me on Facebook and Instagram. Oh, remember, if you want some printables, um, you can go to my Etsy shop. There's a quick little link below. Every five is $2.50, okay? All right, you guys, that is it for this one. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.